Hello everyone. It's taken a while, but we finally have reached the final part of the mode event. But before we see how the party ends once and for all for us, I thought that we should go through the game discs and take a look at some of the conversation clips that we never actually reached in any of our playthroughs. Now there are a lot of miscellaneous clips, but here are a few that are perhaps some of the more eventful. What? That's what you've got for me? What do you take me for? You- I get myself involved in a deep clutch for that? God, you asshole! Get out! Please, would you just get out now? Let- Get out! So you might remember that we get pretty close with Charity at one point, uh, and she becomes very happy with us when we tell her all about the mode machine, but this outcome I think is what happens if we have not actually unlocked the Edom file. She gets upset with us because we actually have nothing to tell her, and she throws us out. I guess we can't blame her. But there's another conversation on Disc 3 with Charity that we should take a look at. I think this conversation is supposed to happen after we've shown her the EDOM file, but for some reason I never seem to be able to reach this in the game. And the reality of the powerful, subversive, socio-political cult lurking in the shadows of this unusual cultural event can no longer be denied. Documents that have come into the possession of this reporter show not only the involvement of artist and anarchist Vito Brevis, but also a list of luminaries from the ranks of the social and political elite that will shock the world in an organization whose overt goal is nothing less than the total overthrow of this government and others. What this all means can at this point only be guessed at. Let's talk to that person I referred to earlier, the mysterious party crasher who discovered the key to this whole breathtaking mystery. Hello again. Tell me and my viewers, if you would, when you first happened upon this, this astonishing document, what I have been referring to as the Edom file, what did you think of the tale that it told? Okay. And we can hear in the background someone telling Charity to cycle through a variety of emotions. Perhaps the director, Jeff Green. <laughs> And Charity is emoting for us. All kinds of emotions. Thank you very much. Now all that's left is to have this astonishing document checked by the proper authorities to determine its authenticity and its impact on the world and on Vito Brevis, who is now just moments away from what he has billed his last performance ever. This is Charity Flame reporting to you from Mode. Great, thank you. Yeah, I think we got it. Thanks, you were great, terrific. You totally made my night. In fact, I think you should stick around because actually Vito is finally coming on soon. And we're going to go set up our cameras by the stage in a few minutes, so hang tight and, uh, oh, this is so exciting. And so that is what seems to be the final conversation with Charity. It's kind of a shame that I was never able to get there in the game itself because this kind of closes out her storyline if you so choose to help her. This puts a, puts a bow on all that, puts a, some kind of conclusion on it. But that's the final conversation with Charity Flame. They're still here. Truly audacious. I'm dialing now. And Tuba's answering. Hello, Big T. It's me and me. I'm in my cubbyhole and I'm being bothered by a very attractive loser 
Please come and give them the boot. I'm hanging up now. And they're still staring at me, apparently unconcerned. I figure they're extremely stupid or bold as hell. I don't know how long they'll hang in there, but... Oh, that was quick. So, Mia can have us thrown out if we annoy her. I don't think it ever came to that in any of our playthroughs, but she is capable of calling Tuba if she feels that she should. So what do you say? Wanna work up a real sweat? The health club's open. Wanna take a sauna? Of course, when we go dancing with her, she does ask us if we want to go take a sauna. We've always said yes before, but if we say no, I mean, she just kind of loses interest and just kind of dances away, never to be seen again. But there's also something else we can talk with her about. You might remember that she's shown us a couple things on her laptop about some people previously. She showed us some information on Rial and also uh, a video that Vito had recorded. Uh, if we had talked to other people previously to talking to Mia, though, she can show us some other things, including this video. Wakey, wakey, Ed. Hey, what are you doing? You've been such a naughty boy. Hey, stop that. I wonder what Vito would think. <laughs> hey, don't you dare show that to Vito. No, oh, stop that. I mean, come on. Yeah, stop it. You're a party pooper. Just that. turn around oh, for me. Be serious. Come hey, on. You did everything I told no, you no, last no. night. He's going to kill me if he finds out. Oh, just Go. one thing. Just show your come, behind. Come, come on. on. Get out of here. Let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> Ed would freak if he knew I was showing this around. <laughs> Don't you love it? So this never actually gets brought up at any other point in the game, but it does seem that maybe uh, Mia and Ed were maybe fooling around behind Vito's back. It's the only point this ever gets brought up. The point is, it's all bullshit. He made it all up. Well, he took some real stuff, some real religious spiritualist stuff from books, but most of it, the people, the places, the events, his involvement, it's all made up. It's all social propaganda. So, this is another conversation path that I'm not sure how you get to, but Ed is kind of clarifying what the deal is with the EDOM in that it apparently does not exist, that Vito just kind of made it all up. And we kind of, he kind of got hints at that throughout the game. We kind of figured that, uh, maybe Vito was not entirely on the level with this whole cult thing, but there is a conversation path, as you can see here, with, where Ed just pretty much confirms, no, the EDOM is just pretty much all made up. Yeah. It used to be for fun. We used to laugh all the time. Now? Now it's like we're engineering the end of the world or something. Vito's even starting to get one of those Jim Jones stands. Just another conversation clip where Ed's very concerned about what he and Vito are doing with the dome and pointing out uh, Vito's Jim Jones tan. This is another video clip where we just kind of zoom in on one of Ed's monitors. I don't know why this is here or how you would actually get to it in the game. Why, why we're doing that. Hi, you're still here. Great. I won't be a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I got some work to catch up on, so uh, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I'm really sorry about this, but uh, tell you what, I'll catch you later, okay? Bye-bye now. So sometimes the, the relationship with Ed doesn't go into the romantic. Sometimes we just remain friends, but hey, he has a lot, to work to, a lot of work to do, so he'll see us later. We can also don't do anything when we go into the to the bathroom after him. He kind of notices that we're here. Oh, come on! Show the decorum here! Get out of here! Come on! Get out of here! Jeez, I'll be out in a few minutes. Come on! Get out! Jesus. 
Hey, come on. Listen, I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression, but uh, I'll be out in a few minutes, okay? did to me, but I just had a transcendental experience, and it was... I... I definitely want to see you again. Yeah. I'd really like that. Oh, bye. So this seems to be a scene after we got up close with Bella. Uh, we didn't get this during our playthrough when we were backstage with Bella, but she seemed to really have a very good time. Well... That was... <laughs> wow. I really would like to see you again. Bye now. That one didn't seem as sincere somehow. I don't know. But we didn't get any of those scenes when we were with Bella, and the reason was that we were interrupted by Solomon, the stage manager, who threw us out from backstage back to the main party room. However, he threw us out because in our previous conversation, he got mad at us. That doesn't always have to be the case. <laughs> What have we here? You naughty little children. Oh, now don't go doing anything I don't wish I was doing with you. Ta. Oh, now I'm trembling with fear. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you're a lone killer stalking overworked stage managers sending ripples of fear through the theater and fashion communities. Oh, the horror of it all. <laughs> no, really. While you may very well be lovely enough to be a model, I know for a fact that I did not hire you for this evening's show, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. It's bedlam back here, and I can't have you adding to the chaos. Clear? Clear? We didn't have too many conversations with Solomon, because uh, I believe he really only has two endings to that conversation. He throws you out both times. One time he does it when he's angry, and the other time he does it just because he's run out of time. Uh, but it does seem like because we only had a couple of conversations, there are a few clips with him that we have not actually seen. Most of them just have to do with him telling us to get out of his office because he has no time. But since I think he's probably the best performer, of the cast of Mode, I think we should probably take a look at these. No, 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 I no longer, no, 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 I cannot have you prevaricating, vacillating, or salivating in front of me anymore. I no longer have the luxury of time to debate this issue with you. Please, take it out of here, or I will be forced to contemplate unseemly and aggressive behavior. I know that. What do you think? I'm some sort of chimp? Oh god, that reminds me. You're gonna have to go. I'm not kidding. Nathan! Yes, I've got bad news. You know, well, that animal act you sent over, it went AWOL. Yeah, I, I know. I know! <laughs> well, that's not gonna help me now, is it, Nate? No. <laughs> well, I don't know. The, the, the monkey got a whiff of the deli tray, the, the boa grabbed the makeup girl by the ass, and the next thing I know, the whole menagerie is moving its way towards the fire escape. I never knew those iguanas moved so quickly. You know, sure, sure, and the last time I looked, you were about half the size and twice as hairy. I gotta go. <laughs> Are you still here? Look, maybe I'm not making myself understood. Go now! What the hell am I doing here? I... 
I could have been a sculptor. I would have been great. I might have been happy. Put me through to Mandy. Hi there, it's me. Yeah, yeah, it's going fine. I quit. Well, I don't give a damn. He can rot in hell. Yeah. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> Bye. <sighs> Go now, please. Hi, Jay. No, it's total hell. Yeah. Vito's a jerk, the models are stiffs, the bookings are a joke, the schedule's a complete botch job, and I've got a PMS migraine like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, I want you to come pick me up. Well, that'll keep. Well, you can tell him that I think his collage stink and that he has no business keeping you there this late. No, I'm quitting. Oh, he won't even notice. He's so full of it, no one else has any. Okay? Bye. Are you still here? This is not a doctor's office, although a thorough medical examination could be arranged. Look, what in the hell is wrong with you? Are you some kind of psychopath, some twisted nightcrawler lurking the back rooms of trendy fashion parties, waiting for some kinky clothes horse to buy into your dementia? Are you gonna leave? <laughs> you know, your type really burns my ass. You're ridiculous. You know, you think you throw on the right clothes, you put on the right smirk, and you can just do anything you like, like God stamp your face with some permanent backstage pass. It's a joke, right? You know, I think it's time for you to leave now. <laughs> you. I cannot believe that you would have the unmitigated goal to show your face back here again. What the hell is wrong with you? Get out! Get out! Surely you must lack some sort of basic communication skills. I'm not being the least bit obtuse in all of this. I don't know how you get to that one. I've never gotten that clip in the game. But apparently you can go back into his office one more time to get that. And so that's it for Solomon. A role in which it pretty much consists of him yelling at us to get out of his office. <laughs> well, now I know. That's good. I like you. Um, I have to go make a call right now, and I hate to mingle, so I'll probably be right back here a little later on this evening if you uh, want to track me down. I'll see you later. Bye. You like how smoothly Jack left the frame there? How he exited because he needs to make a call? For some reason, he has a lot of en exits that are like that. And since Jack is such a popular character, I guess that's what we're watching. Yeah. Well, the world needs help, that's for sure. I'm no saint, but uh, I sure do what I can. Listen, I have to go make a call right now. Why don't I catch you a little later on this evening? Bye. Hey, this has been nice. I'd like to see you again. I have to go make a call right now, but I'll be back around here throughout the evening. I'll be looking for you. Bye. Say, la vie. I gotta go. I'll see you later. Ciao. You know, you're just lucky I left my license to kill at home. So, when Jack gets mad at us, we've seen that once before, but it seems that if we did not talk to him on disc 1, we could talk to him on disc 2. And it seems that most of the clips are the same, but there are some alternate clips, such as this one of him getting mad at us and pointing out that he left his license to kill at home. Well, I guess if you're not gonna leave, then I'm gonna have to. It's been a slice. Jack Nietzsche with the um, the one-liners to end the conversation. You might notice from this little screen that I've frozen on, we can dome Jack, 
if he gets mad at us, and that's something we never actually did. We domed Jack once, and that led to us dancing, but this time he's mad at us, we're probably mad at him, so if we have the dome, it appears we can give him a zap. <sighs> So, you thought you'd send me on a wild frolic, did you? Well, I got news for you. That's obstruction. And I've got you now. Big fish may have gotten away, but I'm gonna have a lot of fun grinding you down. Come here. By the way, I don't know what drug that was you used on me, but uh, you're gonna wish for some of that tonight. Not sure how you get to this one. Jack is obviously angry at us, and we're being arrested, so I guess that's another way the mode event can end. We can get arrested. We never got to that in any of our playthroughs, but it sounds for, like from what he said that whatever causes this outcome, we use the dome on him. I don't know if maybe it was what we just saw, where we can use the dome on him during our first conversation, or what it is, but this is a potential outcome. Did you get that? Because I'm not going to show you again. It's a sweet little toy, really. Invented by Vito's Techno Oz Boy, Ed. Yeah, you put it on your finger, it works. And when you touch someone, it gives them a special jolt. And then, instant euphoria. Hallucinations. <laughs> Who cares how it works? But important, you can't do it to yourself. And the way you feel about someone, affects what it does. Weird, right? Well, who knows? It might come in handy. So there is an additional clip in which Rial can tell us something about what the dome does. Fortunately, we don't need to hear this to actually use the dome ourselves, but he does give us a little bit more information on it. All right, come here. During our conversation with Rial on Disc 3, we can kind of uh, do something that's a bit similar to when Vito tells us to come over here, because he's going to dome us and we're going to have some hallucination fun with Vito. We can get a similar conversation with Rial, however, when we come over there, his dome does not quite do the same thing. Rather, it knocks us out until the end of the party. Yo, bro. Got a problem with the machine? No, this is interesting. Could be a malfunction. No, this is good. This is very, very good. As good as her? Now, there are a number of ways that this fight can turn out, and uh, there are a couple that I did not know about until I played around with it more. For one thing, I always thought that to interfere with the fight, you needed a dome. It turns out you don't. If you just click on either Jack or Rial directly, you will punch them. So, we could try punching Jack and see how that goes. <laughs> no! So, not very well. We are bad at hand-to-hand -hand fighting, it seems, and Jack is able to fight both uh, us and Rial off at the same time. What happens now if we punch Rial? So as it turns out, we can assist Jack with arresting Rial after all, if we rely on our fist instead of high technology. Thanks for the help. Do. 
real estate in front of me, right? I gotta get back up. Don't go away. So there is a third outcome to the balcony thing. We know that re- we know that Jack can be thrown off. We know that both Rial and Jack can fall off. But it's also the case that when you interfere, it can be the case that Jack will toss Rial over and Jack remains alive. However, you might also remember that when Rial throws Jack off of the balcony, Rial then asks us a question. You're not going to say anything, are you? Well, what happens if we don't promise to say anything? Uh, Wrong answer. Yep, we get domed, and we can get thrown off the balcony ourselves. I'm actually not sure if this clip plays in the game after you get domed by Rial, but it is on the disc. It does seem that uh, there is supposed to be a situation where this will play in the game. So yeah, we ourselves can get thrown off of the balcony. So that's another way that the mode event can end for us. Wait, let us take this moment to consult the Oracle. Ask a question of the future. So, Shiva asks us this whenever we have a conversation with her, and there are a few different responses that we can get, and as far as I can tell, they're completely random. Maybe there is something that influences which one you get, but as far as I can tell, these are random. Let's have a look at them. Ah, Kun, Earth, receptive. Where you shall follow, there will be guidance. Would you like to follow me? I can give you guidance, far beyond anything that you can imagine. But don't answer now. Soon I will come for you, and then you can follow me if you want. Oh, not good. It is Pai Chen over Kun. Stagnation. Heaven is above the earth, but they are not united. The great departs, the small approaches. Your path is awry, my friend. Good luck. Hmm. Quan. Sun over the kin, wind over the earth, contemplation. There will come a time when you feel the need for contemplation. When you're faced with a high vantage point, where you are to view what you've become and what you've done. You will feel the movement of the wind. You will know when that moment is to arrive and where to go. The cast is Ta Chuang, thunder over heaven, the power of the great. You step without error, and your strength is through perseverance. You do not need my help. Good luck. Ah, yes. Tai, Kun over Chen. Peace. The small departs the great approaches. There will be good fortune for you. The gifts of heaven and earth are in abundance. Perhaps I should give you a gift as well. Look for me later. Ah, creative. Qian, heaven, sublime success. The movement of heaven is full of power. Your path is strong. You do not need my help. So there are six different fortunes she can give us, and none of them really sound like anything. However, there was that one in which she said that we should look for her later. I've never actually gotten that one in the game, but it might explain another clip that appears on the disc 3 for this game, in which we see Shiva on the dance floor. And, uh, yeah, we just see her dancing. I mean, I only have to ass- I have to assume that she only appears if she tells us to look for her later on, because I have never seen her appear on disc 3. 
Now, I also have to assume that if we were to get this scene, that there would be an option to use the dome, because the other clip of Shiva on disc three is this. <laughs> so, Killer Clown's conversation is very short. There are not many clips to see, but there is one outcome that we never got to, and that's basically Clown collapsing and seemingly dying from an overdose of pills and alcohol. So, we literally can do save his life if we say the right things. You arrived late, didn't you? So, what have you done so far? Now, when Vito asks us this on disc two, his answer will depend on who it is we've been speaking to, or I think rather who we've spoken to last. And there are a number of descriptions that we haven't heard yet, so we might as well go through them. What happens if we haven't spoken to anyone? Maybe Vito's the only person we've spoken to. Oh, no, 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 not nearly enough. You must go away and get yourself experienced and then come back and see me. Okay? Okay. And Vito doesn't think too much of that. What about if we've used the mode machine, but we have not unlocked the Edom file? Ah, uh, yes, the machine. An amusing diversion, to be sure. A frivolous swath of computer candy floss. Or is it? The next time you play, stop looking at all the pretty pictures and see if you can find God. Sweet Charity? Yes, I know her. And she is certainly anxious to know me. She wants to tear open my belly and let all my ugly secrets spill out, and I won't let her. I might tell you my secrets, though. I mean, since we're friends. Now that Shiva is something special, no question. If she offers you a gift, you be sure and take it, because she doesn't offer it very often. In the meantime, I have a gift to offer. Come here, I'll give it to you. There are people here who want your soul. Hell, I want your soul. I'll get it later. I'm actually not sure if we've already seen that one, but I just like that clip. What? A Jim Jones tan? Oh man, that's cruel. Vito can respond if we got Ed to say that he has a Jim Jones tan. I just like that little response there. Also, as far as Mo, uh, dome experiences with, with, with Vito go, there are four altogether. We've gotten three during our playthroughs, so we might as well see the final one. Ego, power, love, money, sex, beauty, ego, power, envy, lust, angst, art, money, money, power. So that took longer than I thought it would, uh, and there are still a number of miscellaneous clips on these discs that we never actually got to, but I think at this point we've hit all of the important stuff. And I think maybe now it's time to move on and see if we can get our final ending. Welcome to Mode. Yep, yeah, how you doing? So, what other ending could there be? I mean, at this point, we've seen three performances from Vito Brevis. We've seen his performance as it goes off without a hitch. We've seen his performance sabotaged by Ed. And we've seen Vito just decide not to do his performance after all. Decide that it just wasn't worth it. So what else could there be? Some people have asked, what is the true ending of Mode? What is the real ending that we're trying to get to? But I mentioned back in the first video that Mode really has no objective. It has no goals. It doesn't tell you this is what you have to do or present as any way as being the right way or the wrong way. 
It's only your way, the way that you chose. What did your decisions come to? What result came out of it? There's nothing necessarily right or wrong, or true or false, about any of these endings or anything that we've done. It's just about what we've decided, the choices that we've made. But we've made a lot of choices at this point. What other choices could there be to make? I mean, any of any choice that could be important, we've already made it, right? Well, maybe not. Maybe there's been one choice that we've always let the game just make for us. Your pass to this event is the dome pin you received with your ticket. You must wear this at all times while inside the mode event. Hey, if you've got a dome, put it on. Hey, I'm sorry. No dome. It's time to go home. But get a dome or go home. You should have one of these. Yeah, the dome. We've never really questioned needing to get the dome. I mean, the game tells us that we need to get it. And if we don't get it, we're going to be thrown out by Tuba. And we don't want that. So when I was doing the, this LP on streams, the chat always wanted to get the domes. And we've continued to do that in these individual runs because obviously it seemed like a good idea. I mean, the dome is the closest thing this game has to a power up. It lets us do things that we couldn't do without it. It gives us conversation paths that didn't exist without it. And of course, we can zap people in the face, which is fun. So of course we want the dome. Who wouldn't want the dome? But that's never really been a choice we've made ourselves, has it? We've always just let the game make that choice for us. And we haven't really questioned it because, hey, it's a game and we want the power up. We're a, we're a player of a video game the video game is telling us to get the dome, so obviously we need to get it. What if we don't? What if we decide that we're not going to do what the game says? What if we decide to break the only rule of the mode event and witness Vito Brevis' performance without a dome? Now you might ask, if we do this, don't we risk being thrown out by Tuba? Well, that's only if someone calls him. So I think now it's about time for a speed run of the mode event. No and time to listen to Charity Talk. No time for the stage either. Hey, there's Ed. Nope, no time for Ed. I'll have to work on his uh, technology by himself. Hey, what does Vito have to say? We won't know because we don't have time to listen to him. Hey, there's Rial. He usually gives us the dome, but not this time. There's Mia. She just wants to be left alone with her po with her poetry, and we will let her do that. We'll leave her to it. Now, still no time for the stage. Does Charity want to talk now? Well, it's too bad, because we don't have time to talk. What it is time for is Disc 2. All right, here we are on disc two. Who's here for us to ignore? There's video again. We still have no time. Hey, Charity, she's interested in what we know. Hi, I'm so We're not very interested in talking to her about it, though. Oh, hey, there's Jack. He's on disc two because we didn't talk to him in disc one. We're not talking to him here either. Yep. Shiva. She'll have no one to give her predictions to. Stage? We still don't have time for the stage! What about back there? There's no one back here. There's dancing, but we don't even have time for dancing. Oh wait, there's backstage, that's right. There's Bella, back here. We'll leave her to her makeup. Wait, Shiva, doesn't she get the hint at this point? I saw you. And we don't see you, though. Yep, time for disc three. And here we are on disc three. This evening is just going so quickly. There's Rial. He's going to want us to talk to Jack. Uh. 
Ah, uh, let's take a look around for other people to talk to and then leave immediately. Still no time for dancing. Hey, there's Ed! No time for Ed's crisis of... of Faith to Vito either. We also have to go through all of these stage performances, but I think if we just look at a little bit, they should go on to the next one. Yeah, that seems different. Yeah, that does seem like it's going through. Oh, hey, there's Vito. Why is Vito doing this? What is the point? Hey, we don't know Vito. Let's head back to the stage. Okay, there he is. There's Clown. And once again, no time to talk to Clown. Hopefully things turn out okay for him. Okay then, so since we've talked to everyone, since we've spoken to everyone and gotten to the end of the mode event without a dome, what could possibly happen? Vito Brevis said that he wanted everyone who viewed the final performance at the end of the evening to have a dome, and everyone who didn't should be thrown out. But here we are, domeless, and at the end of the evening. So what will happen? when we view Vito's final performance on stage. I guess it's time to find out. Revis has steadfastly refused all requests for an interview, but has magnanimously allowed our camera to record his performance, which if previous years are any indication, could very well prove to be the biggest surprise in an evening full of surprises. Let's watch. Why are you here? You have come to this room on this night expecting what? What pathetic goals did you set for yourself as you crossed the threshold this evening? Was it sex? Drugs? Scandal? Murder? What would you say to Godhead? Perhaps you've heard the rumors that I and my colleagues are involved in an ancient, powerful, mystic cult, yes? Well, I'm happy to inform you that the rumors are true. We are the Edom. We are the razor-sharp edge of a vast global power pyramid that has been evolving for millennia. We are a gene echo from prehistory, before the dark veil of consciousness was pulled down over our minds. We have drawn our plans in secret, preparing the world for the day when we will take our place at the head of a transformation that has been foretold since the dawn of humanity. Sanity. And now, our time is at hand. And the good news is, that you're all invited. That's right. Tonight, a portal will open before you, and you will witness the absolute power of the Edo. You will be bathed in the glory of the essence of creation, baptized in fire, forever transmuted. You will become disciples and witnesses of the first act the doomed pageant of this civilization. Apostles of the new dawn. This is a children. Let's get metaphysical!
Did you get that? Rolling. 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 Awesome. Amazing. Astonishing. Words cannot possibly express the feelings at work in the room at this moment. What have we just experienced here? I think I can speak for everyone in the room that we have witnessed a transformation. And it's clearly no magic trick. It's no prop and lighting illusion. I think I have no doubt in my mind that whatever Vito has done, whoever, whatever he is involved with, it is surely something momentous. Is he really gone? Can we really ever know? Will anything ever be the same again? <laughs> this is Charity Flame on the scene at the Mode event. Hmm. Congratulations, you have survived Mode. Good luck in the real world. And so, as we watched Vito's final performance, as the only person in the room without a dome, we finally saw the truth behind the illusion. We saw what Vito's final performance actually was. While everyone else in the room was gasping in awe of the techno illusion that Ed was making them see. I like to believe that the cameras are immune to the dome, so they actually recorded what was actually going on, and uh, everyone at home watching the broadcast got to see everyone gasping and moaning in unbelievable, just not knowing what they were seeing, while the people at home were actually seeing Vito performing the least sexiest striptease ever. So that's the fourth and final final performance from Vito Brevis, and the true one. While there may not be a true ending to Mode, that was the actual performance that Vito was cooking up all this time. And I like to believe that he knew that we didn't have a dome and that we were seeing what he was actually doing as he laughed and pointed at us in the back. So that's it for the final, final performance. We've seen it all now. Does that mean that the LP is over? Does that mean that I can finally leave the mode event after all this time? Is it all over? Is it finally done? Do, do I have to go back again or can I finally shut the game off? No. Once again, I find myself in the elevator going up to the penthouse where Vito Brevis's party of the year, the mode event, is being held. But haven't we seen everything by now? Haven't we made all of the choices there are to make? We even made the choice to go against what the game told us to do and was rewarded. We were rewarded by seeing Vito's actual performance. Welcome to mode. What is there left to do to finally end this game, this party, and this LP? Well, mode is a game all about choices. There is no objective, there is no goal. There's only the goal that you decide to set for yourself. And so I think my goal right now is to end this LP. So we're gonna head on in. We're gonna say a brief hello to Mr. Brevis. What is it? We're going to turn right around. And we are going to make the decision for ourselves that we are going to leave the mode event. And we're going to take the elevator straight down. Going so soon? Goodbye. And now, with that, now that we've made the final choice, the final decision, we made the choice to leave the mode event of our own free will. And with that, this Let's Play is finally over. 
I hope you've enjoyed watching Let's Play Mode. It's... It's a look at a very interesting game, a very experimental game, that didn't perhaps get the chance it needed, due to the obvious, obvious technical limitations, and also, of course, the negative feelings there were against full motion video games at the time, and at least very much so it continues on today. FMV games have always had a very poor reputation. Mode never really got out of the starting gates. And it seems like a shame, because even though there are, of course, many technical problems with this game in a number of ways, including a number of crashes that, we, that I've had, as I've tried to, been trying to let's play this game, like I said, it's very experimental. It's interesting in the sense that it sort of eschews a lot of the traditional, traditional things that you have in a game, such as clear-cut objectives. Such as the game telling you what it is you're supposed to be doing, and why. It doesn't give you any of that. This is just all about, what is it that you think you should be doing? What are the choices and decisions that you want to make? And what are the consequences and repercussions of those actions? You make your own objective, you decide what you want to do with the party. No one else. The game will not do that for you. Because real life will not do that for you. And while, of course, in terms of technical limitations, it we might not say this is an accurate simulation of going to a party in real life, but perhaps back in the mid-90s, this was the best that, tech that uh, technology could offer in terms of a party simulator. It seems like the kind of thing that you might see nowadays uh, with indie games. It seems like the sort of subject that would be more likely to see. But back in the mid-90s, on an actual retail release, or at least it was supposed to be, this really was a very unusual project, and as such, I think a lot of people didn't really know what to make of it, rather judging it the way that they would judge traditional video games. While this was trying to be something completely different, it just so happened that there was rather quite a backlash at the time towards FMV games and games that were trying to go too far out of the traditional mold, which of course, Mode did. But I'm glad I got to play it. I'm glad I got to interact with it and have these wonderful social experiences. In a way, Mode has... Mode is deeper than a lot of similar games today. Games that emphasize speaking with other characters, emphasize conversation options. Mode has a lot of different conversation options, a lot of different outcomes that can happen because of them, and a whole lot of video clips in between that you might not see ever during any of your playthroughs of Mode. So, it's a shame that Mode never got a chance, but I'm glad I got to play it now, and I'm glad that you got to watch it with me. This is it for Let's Play Mode. I'm sorry it took so long to actually finish this. That's entirely my fault. But even though there were some really large delays in between these videos, I hope you enjoyed them. And I hope you feel perhaps a little bit more, a little bit more socially proficient. A little bit, maybe mode can help you in your social interactions from day to day. Just think of it in terms of answering in whether or not you feel red, blue, or green. It helps to simplify things down to that. Again, I hope you've enjoyed watching Let's Play Mode. And I'll see you next time as we go on to other video games. But for right now, this video game is over with. The party is over, the lights are off, the doors are closed. Vito Brevis, that was his final performance, never to be seen again. Thank you for joining me for Let's Play Mode. I'll see you some other time.